If I wanted to take this motion and move it across to another character, it's very easy to do so. All that's required is that both models, both characters, have the tag template structure and the CDK glue and map. To demonstrate this, I'm going to pull in the primitive character XSI Man Armored. Now this guy has an additional weapon that we don't really need, so I'm actually just going to blow that away. Just grab the gun and delete it, as well as the gun control. An XSI Man, if we just zip up Mulcor here, contains its own tag template structure. So with two tag template structures in place on Man and on Mulcor, we can move the animation easily from one character to the next. Under the motor drop-down menu, I'm going to run the Rig to Rig option, which brings in a property page into the scene. You can see at the bottom here we have our Rig to Rig PPG. And all that's required is for us to pick both characters. So the source model is the Mulcor character, which I'll pick. Just grab anything on the Mulcor character to grab the model. And then the target, XSI Man. And I actually just grab the pull vector of Mulcor, so I'll grab... There we go. Grab the correct character. This is a 58 frame animation on Mulcor, so I'll just set the start and end range appropriately. And then apply the animation. The curves get processed, the map is looked up, and in short order, we have our animation mapped out for us. So we have the exact same animation transfer between characters of slightly different scales. Of course, on our XSI Man, we can adjust the properties just the same way we did with the Mulcor character. So if I need to scale down the XSI man's stride, maybe his legs are a slight bit shorter, or they are a slight bit shorter than Mulcor's, so I can take the scale factor and lower the scale. So at a scale of 1, you can see that the stride is just a little too long. XSI man's legs stretch out, basically, to the limits of the IK. However, if I shorten the stride, you can see that the legs retarget perfectly. And once I have that motion retargeted in much the same way, I can plot my animation to a file. So when we're plotting motor keyframes, I'm essentially just plotting animation out, the motor animation out, as function curve data. So I can specify my keyframe spacing, and again the same start and end frame. So we're calculating the local transforms on the bones and on the controls now. And when we look at the end result after the curves have been fit, we get all of that animation moved on over to our XSI man. Just find him. There it is. There's nothing in the mixer. This exists as a pure motion clip. So I can take the file again here and turn it into a motion file. So I can now call this XSI Man Run Limp. And again, we're saving our animation as motor. 58 frames worth. And just to show how this works, after I've adjusted the scale on my character, on the man character, we'll take this file and reapply it to a clean version. So I'll load them in again. This time I'll load in just XSI man. And I'll load the motor file onto him. Load motion. and apply. If I drag the file, again, you can see that the animation 
just works. The stride length has been shortened to account for XSI man's shorter stature. And of course we can go in and adjust once again. Shorten the file, shorten the scale, shorten the speed, shorten the stride length, whatever it is we need to do to retarget that motion accurately on our character. So the rig to rig tool covers the final option available to us from within motor. A very cool tool set.